So I love starting off with the name of this cannon. It's a beautiful name. It's a model 1841 six bottom smoothbore field gun. Can anyone repeat that back? 1821 smoothbore field gun. <laughs> It's a very long technical name. Even the soldiers stationed here at Mackinac would never call it by that name. They'd often just call it the six pounder. Now, the barrel alone weighs 800 pounds. What do you think does weigh six pounds about this can? Cannonball. Oh, it's a cannonball. So this cannon could lob a six pound cast iron cannonball about the range of a mile. So about the edges of Round Island up there, it's pretty impressive. And at that mile range, you're going to hit a target about the size of Round Island up there. It's not that accurate. See the smooth bore, so there's no rifling that like, puts like a spin, kind of like a football. So that, 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 that cannonball is going to go any direction it less bounces. Its accurate range is only about about half a mile. So at the edge of that brake hole out there where that ferry's going, and no, he won't sink a ferry. We get that sped a lot. <laughs> but um, even then, we're only going to hit a ship-sized target about one in three shots. So it's still not that accurate with a cannon. But it doesn't necessarily have to be. To See, by the 1880s, what me and Connor are dressed to represent, the soldiers are here at Fort Mackinac taking care of what, taking care of what is then the National Park of Mackinac Island. They're not here to defend against some unknowing state invasion. We're facing the wrong way anyway. But um, they're here just to, take, to take care of the park. And they were given a cannon for ceremonial purposes. So they'd be firing what are called salute shots, essentially like a blank for a cannon. So they'd be firing it for the raising the flag in the morning, the, lower, the lowering of it in the evening. They'd be firing it for federal holidays like a 38 gun salute on the 4th of July or the president's birthday. Even such things such as like the first boat of tourists after a long winter, pretty much any excuse could, you could find to fire a cannon because <laughs> even in the 1880s, firing cannons is pretty cool. So <laughs> I think we have enough reason to fire a salute shot in honor of all the other day. What do you think? Yeah. 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 All right, sounds good. So our first step in loading to make sure this can stay for load is me putting this leather thumb patch on my thumb and covering the touch hole. This is called thumb stalling. This prevents any air from going into the cannon prematurely detonating, making a bad day for Connor down there. <laughs> so he's going to take his first tool, the gunner's worm or auger, essentially a corkscrew and a stick. He's going to run that down the barrel. What he's doing is he's searching for any debris from our last shot, and historically there might have been some muzzling or claw. But, and uh, we find that smolders, so if he finds it anything today, he's going to find some historically inaccurate aluminum foil. It burns up a lot easier, and if any comes out, it's harmless. It just confetti's out. Now he's going to take his next tool, the wet swab, essentially a dirty wet sponge on a stick. Grease it. And he's going to run that, dump that into a bucket of water, and he's going to run down the barrel. This will do two things. The wetness on the sponge is going to extinguish any other sparks that could be remaining down there from our last shot, as well as because of my gallant thumb stalling, we're creating a vacuum. So that thumpy heard was that vacuum collapsing, so we can rest assured it's safe to load our charge. Now, historically, it would take about 20 ounces of black powder to launch a uh, six-pound cannonball about the range of a mile. And even salute shots in the 1880s were about 10 ounces of black powder. Today, I can only use four. I know it's, it's, it's small. It's, it'll still be loud, but 10 ounces rattles windows, scares horses, and knocks paintings off the art museum, and we don't want that. <laughs> so we'll use four. It'll still be loud, I promise. I'm going to ram that down and seat it fully with the rammer. Now that we're fully loaded, we can roll it into position. To the front. Now we move on to our last, last step before we fire, called priming. Now I don't know if you've seen like a Revolutionary War movie or a reenactment where they just pour black powder loosely and touch it up with a match. That's fine and dandy on a nice day like today, but like on a rainy day or when there's wind, that black powder can blow away or can get wet. And by the 1840s, we developed a much more reliable way in adverse weather called the friction primer. I'll get one out so I can show you. I can grab one, there we go. It's essentially a hollow brass tube filled with fo the finely ground gunpowder. And the tip is a very friction sensitive chemical called fulminated mercury. So when you pull this pin, it creates a spark with that fulminated mercury, kind of like a cap gun. And it sets a jet of flame down the tube, igniting your main charge. Then the time's going to attach a lanyard because you really don't want to pull that pin with your fingers. You probably wouldn't have any fingers left. Mm -hmm. all set. Now it's at this time, although we're using a smaller charge, it is still a cannon, so it's still going to be a little loud. So if you want to cover your ears, or get your cameras ready or every priority live. <laughs> With that, there are two commands to fire this cannon. They are ready, fire! Wow. And there you have it. There's your smooth charge to welcome you here to Fort Mackinac. Yay!